Hey guys, it's Doc, and today I'm going to do a video on a spring checklist. We're going to go over a bunch of different stuff that you need to think about. We're going to give you some updates. We're going to show you a bunch of different things. So hold on one sec. Hey guys, let me tell you what I'm going to go over on this video real quick. Uh, I'm going to tell you what's going on back here with these orange flags over here. We're going to talk about late frosts that come in. We're going to talk about spring checklist things that you need to start thinking about and some of the things that i start to think about we're going to talk about products that you need to get on hand and sort of have on stock so that you're not late to the game and all of a sudden it's out of stock we're going to talk about pre-emergence real quick we're going to talk about fertilizers real quick we're going to talk about army worms we're going to give you some product updates and go real quick go over how to protect some of your plants from these late frost and I'm going to give you a weed killing update. I'm going to walk you over and show you some of the dead weeds and what's going on there. Okay, so first of all, uh, I put a, I did a video this past week, which was a pretty thorough lawn fertilizer video. And I talked about these test strips that we're doing back here. It's nothing real formal. But all I did was I took the grassy knoll and I divided it into three strips, just sort of playing around. What I did was uh, I took exact measurements of these three areas, which is 300 square feet. I took the exact amount of fertilizer needed. So for 300 square feet, for this first one is Melorganite, we used 4.7 pounds. And I actually have a video of measuring out 4.7 pounds. And I had to hand distribute it because <laughs> to make sure it all got out even. So I hand took very carefully, hand distributed it over here on the Melorganite. This next strip over here, we did a super juice, only super juice spraying at a 14 to 4 ratio. This next strip over here, what we did is we did a, a granular chemical fertilizer, cheap chemical fertilizer from Lowe's. 0.79 pounds was exactly what we needed on 300 square feet. So I measured it out and I had a little bowl and I went ahead and I sprinkled it little by little to make sure I evenly got it out. I can't put it in a spreader and, and put it out in the spreader. So those are three test strips. Here's what's interesting about these test strips. Now we're gonna watch them over the next four to six weeks and we're gonna play with them. Like this middle strip, there's a brand new fertilizer that I'm asking the Andersons to actually put on the, put on Amazon for you and for me, because it's a great professional level fertilizer. It's reasonable, comes in small bags. I talk about it in that video that I just did. At the end of that video, I talk about this fertilizer that I'm hoping to have up in about four weeks or so for you guys. One of the reasons why I'm doing this or, or we're talking about it today is because we have the we have a hard freeze coming in. Unfortunately, my grass is all green. <laughs> my grass has a nice green haze everywhere. And guess what? On Tuesday and Wednesday, the low is gonna be 21 and 22 degrees. Ugh, can't stand that. That happened a couple years ago too. A couple years ago, I bought all these knockout roses, you know, brilliant me in March planted it all came out here and dug and busted my butt planting all these things and a hard freeze came in and just about ki just about killed them all it didn't totally kill them they actually came back but man it hurt them really bad so i want to talk about the hard freeze coming in too but it'll be interesting to see because these areas have actually started to green up some it'll actually be interesting to see um what happens also i'll grab the camera here in a minute and show you just how green some of my grass is getting. My lawn, my soil and my lawn is super heavy from everything we did last year, from the humic treatments that we did, the fertilizer that we did, everything that we did with this lawn really got it healthy. Remember, when we bought this house, what, three and a half years ago, this lawn was horrible. It was basically a clay patch. Uh, it was sodded, but it just wasn't taken care of. Um, and so over the past three years, I've really managed to bring it back. And again, same thing with the, the other lawns that I'm working with. We're working to bring those back. Barb's has made tremendous progress in a period of one year. I was talking to her the other day and I said, you remember what your lawn looked like about a year ago? It was almost solid red clay. And now she's got a great looking yard. So real quick, before I get onto the checklist, let me show you something. Uh, I think it was 1980. <laughs> 1980 I was working in a warehouse a real large warehouse with a real good gardener and learned a lot back then but one of the things he used to do is he used to use these um, canvas drop cloths now these you can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot uh, maybe I'll try and find them on Amazon for you too. see if they're a little cheaper they're not cheap this is a six by nine it's about seven bucks because it's a heavy canvas cloth you can use those if you've planted flowers or anything you want to protect, you can put that over it 
before you go to before, uh, later in the afternoon put it over that put a couple bricks around it and just leave it and for the whole night into the morning even the next day you can leave it out there a couple days now they're not light so you might have to put some poles if you have flowers because they may push down on the flowers but you see these sort of i forget what they're called these palm trees here last year uh Last year, we had two weeks of sub-teen temperatures. I mean, like down to 13, 14, 15 degrees. Those things turned completely brown and died off. And it took them all last year to grow back up. And we were so happy that they survived the winter. But I'm concerned with all this warm weather and now these 20 degrees coming in. So I'm going to take one of these drop cloths and we're going to cover that up. And all that does is the soil, if my soil temperature is in the 50s, let's say, and I've got two, night of a, two nights of a hard freeze, it just keeps it to the point where it's not a super hard freeze. Maybe it keeps it in the 30s or even high 20s. And that's all it does. So you cannot use plastic tarps, by the way. Plastic transfer that cold, and if it's touching the leaves, it'll kill it. So you gotta use that canvas. Good little tip for you. And one more thing before we get to the checklist, I'll, I'll just let you know that a lot of people, a lot of people uh, put a comment like on one of my YouTube videos, Doc, is that organic fertilizer really $126? No, it's $126. What is it, like 50 or 60 bucks a bag? I can't remember. Here's what happens. You need to come to our website, go to our product links, and make sure you use the product links. Click on the product that I talk about, and it'll take you directly over to the manufacturer's link. It'll, it'll say currently unavailable if it's unavailable and available by other resellers. So if for some reason the Andersons, as an example, ships a Nova to Amazon, if it sells out at 50 some, whatever, I forget what it is. If it sells out, if someone else is selling it, they're gonna bump the price way up. So always come back to our website, click on our product links and look for the direct manufacturer link. I'm just telling you, if it says unavailable, hold on, it'll be back in stock. They're gonna, they're gonna ship it back in. It's really important. I don't want anyone to be spending like, I think the same thing happened with Barricade. Someone had jacked up the price. A third party seller had jacked up the price on Barricade pre-emergent. And I was like, man, what a bunch of jerks. Anyway, checklist. Let's go over the checklist. These are the things I'm thinking about. Number one, pre-emergent. It's March 1st. Your pre-emergent needs to get down. If you're in Georgia or in this region, you need to get that pre-emergent down. Obviously, if you're up north more, you still got time. Soil temperatures, you want to hit it around that 51, 52 degrees soil temperature on a, on a consistent basis. That's when you need to get your pre-emergent down. It's better to be early. Why is it better to be early? I say this all the time. How long does pre-emergent last? A good two months? So why not put it out a week or two early? That's kind of my motto. Get your pre-emergent out earlier, it's better. And there's links, of course, to the pre-emergents that I recommend on the website. So right now, pre-emergent's number one. Number two, I need to start thinking about when I'm gonna scout my lawn. And I actually saw my lawn guy, <laughs> the guy that I used to scout my lawn, I saw him at Lowe's the other day, I was at Lowe's, and we talked and I said, hey, I'm gonna give you a call in a couple weeks to have you come out and scout but I want my lawn to dry out. I don't want them riding all those big machines on my lawn and putting more rut marks in here. So I'm thinking about my scalp. Whether you do it yourself, whether you, whether you hire someone to do it, think about the timing on that. I'm glad I didn't do it early because we got this cold snap coming in. Um, next, I wanna talk about leveling your lawn. Uh, if you go to Google, type in lawn level and then put your city, you'll probably find a service. Hopefully that'll do it for you and that's what I've done. I contacted a place uh, out of Atlanta and they were really expensive. <laughs> and I found actually a local company that actually finally got a hold of him and he came out and we talked. Very reasonable and he does, uh, it's about $80 per thousand square feet to actually aerate and actually they have equipment that comes out and pours the sand and then they spread it. Um, if I just want the leveling part done, it's about $60 per thousand square feet. So that's actually a really good price. So make sure you click that subscribe button because I'm gonna put that on video. When they come out and do the leveling, I'll record that. Also, after you click the subscribe button, just so you know, especially if you have YouTube on your phone, there's a little bell, notification bell, next to subscribe. Make sure that bell is clicked and it'll notify you. On my phone, every time I upload a video, I get a, I get a notification that says, hey, Doc's uploaded a new video and I'll show it to you, I'll put that up. So we'll be doing that lawn leveling video. Everyone's been talking about lawn leveling and my yard from the previous owners has rut marks all the way through it from riding that lawnmower over and over and over and riding in the rain. So maybe we're gonna have a level lawn this year. 
Uh, then I need to think about aerating. Aerating usually is, is probably done once the actual growing season starts, but fertilizer. Fertilizer, you gotta understand, watch that fertilizer video, I'm telling you, because we talk about the importance of using a spray fertilizer or a fast-acting fertilizer in these, in these fertilizer windows. The weed killing that was successful that I did because I did what? I did my weed killing in a weed killing window. In other words, I had three days of warm temperatures and sun, bam, I went out and sprayed and the weeds are dying. Same thing with fertilizer. Look for those fertilizer windows. If you see four days of thunderstorms, don't put out your fertilizer. Wait till that stops, go out and hit it with your super juice and it's going to get right to the lawn. Here's a little tip on the super juice too. When I was reading a, a study about foliar um, sprays. The majority of the nutrients that are going to be taken up by your grass are going to be done within like four, four to six hours while it's wet. And what they recommended, this was a study, is that the better performance was after you leave it out there for four to six hours, if you sort of rinse it down into the soil, now it's whatever's been taken up by the foliage has been taken up, now rinse it down into the soil and it's actually absorbed by the roots. That's a good little trick. And so I'm going to be doing that this year with the super juice. So maybe uh, late afternoon, I'll come out and I'll spray super juice on the lawn. And then what I'll do the next morning, run the irrigation system a little bit and wash it down into the roots. Good little tip for you. So you gotta be thinking about your fertilizers. Remember in that video we talked about, <clears throat> don't be wasting organic fertilizers or something that is organic based when your temperatures are really cool. Organic type fer fertilizers really need to be down when you have good microbial action. So that's one of the reasons why we're talking to Andersons about getting this uh, PGF stuff done. I call it PGF, it's not the name for it really. Um, but it, I call it a professional grade fertilizer because it has humic acid in it, so like an 1804, has 2% iron, um, has really high quality nitrogen at slow release, and the particle size is really small, which is really nice for distribution of all your particles. If she goes poo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill her. You know what the problem is, is that, for, look at that, that's malorganite roll. That's a malorganite roll. That's what she's doing. That's the reason why I stopped using malorganite back here is because every time I put it out, that's the test strip of malorganite. She goes over there and she starts rolling in it like it's a dead animal. Watch her. She's going to do it again. It's going to be only in that one strip she's going to do it. Here she goes. <laughs> now you're going to be watching the dog the whole video. <laughs> hey, stop that. That's nasty. You smell dirty when you do that. <laughs> she gets in trouble. That's funny. That was like on cue. So, uh, <laughs> I forget where I was now. Uh, what were we talking about? We're talking about that fertilizer. Anyways, when that fertilizer comes up, we're going to have them put it in small bags so we're not wasting. Watch that video. Humic acid, humic, again, I like to put my humic acid out when uh, I have the warmer temperatures because it helps boost that microbial action. Oh. Remember, the whole purpose about humic DG and putting humates, humates on, your, on your lawn is it turns your soil into a quality soil. It increases my, microbial activity. It holds the nutrients. It, it locks in nutrients better, and it helps your plants use those nutrients better. So technically speaking, if you're putting humics on your lawn and you've done a lot of it and you've stuck with it, you should be able to put 25% less fertilizer on your lawn and be, have the same results. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about real quick is being prepared for, a lot of people are seeing armyworms earlier and earlier. Last year was a horrible year for armyworms. And this month in February, I've seen three armyworm moths. I don't know where they came from, but I got a feeling because this neighborhood had armyworms last year, it's gonna have them again. And the problem is, is my neighbors don't treat for them. So the moths just come over here. So it's a constant battle. Texas was hit really bad with them. South Carolina was hit with them. And I'm telling you, do a little bit of research and I'll be doing some videos on it, but there's a new product that's coming out that I've asked Anderson. It's a professional grade product and it's a double, it's a double hit granular. And so the DG, the, 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 the little particles that just sort of explode once you put them down, but it's a double hit. It'll treat um, grubs, army worms, ticks, um, ants. It, I mean, it kills all these different things and it's safe because once you put it down, it dissipates into the soil. 
it's going to be a great product and that should be out i hope in about four weeks or so and i'll let you know again come back to the website and click on the bug, bug killing stuff and I'll, or army worm stuff and i'll have a special i'll do a special video on that too again don't forget you know we've got the bermuda grass calendar up on the website the bermuda grass calendar is there for a reason because it just sort of triggers you you can look at that and say oh yeah i'm supposed to do something so you can download it print it put it up in the garage and remind yourself now don't forget there's also a page there and all during the season i'll be going back and come back to the bermuda grass calendar page and look for updates on the page and we'll sort of have updates as far as anything that's a new product when should i put that on so we'll be doing some updates on that page as well too i promised you guys last year that i was going to do a review on a backpack sprayer electric backpack sprayer i did get it and i didn't do a review because i didn't get to use it enough well i've been using it uh mainly because the front entrance to our subdivision i actually do some of the treatments up there i volunteer to do it and I don't want to drag hoses and everything up there, so I've been using the backpack sprayer there. I actually used it to treat the world's worst Bermuda lawn. I did nothing but backpack spray on it to test it out. Pretty happy with it, so I'll go ahead and I'll do a review, hopefully within the next two weeks, about the backpack sprayer. A lot of you guys have uh, had a couple questions about edging and edgers. I use that cheap little plug-in one. I've had that now for a while. Um, I'm going to try a battery one. I'm trying to find a lithium ion battery one that I actually like. So, and I'll give the plug-in one to my son-in-law, let him have that. And then I'm going to use the new battery one and do a review on that coming up. But I got a bunch of different product reviews. We're going to do some testing on this year. Again, click that subscribe button. So let's go over. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of this green grass I got growing over here. It's just crazy in some areas. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm we'll walk over and show you some dead weeds and um, some of the weeds that are dying out here have had some pretty good results. So hold on. Gonna kill you, Curry Chuck. Kill you, Curry Chuck. Kill you, Curry Chuck. Kill you, kill you, kill you, Curry Chuck. Curry Chuck, Curry Chuck, Curry Chuck. But I did want to show you this. Look how green this grass is over here. Look how green this is. Now this is February, this is March 1st. <laughs> Look at that. Poor, I'm gonna lose. I'm afraid I'm gonna lose most of that here. Hey, Linda, are you going poo? You do too many poos out here in the rain. Right, I'll be right back. I'm going across the street. So one thing I did want to show over here, I've got something uh, I hadn't seen this before. This is called, uh, I think they call it clumpy winter rye or clumpy bluegrass. But you can see these over here. <laughs> I had never seen that before, and I think it's called something like a clumpy bluegrass or something. But that's all dying off. Let me show you. Let me show you the world's worst Bermuda lawn over here. I'm gonna show you how bad this looks over here. So here's the world's worst Bermuda lawn. It's full of weeds, but look at all the weeds dying. See, they're all turning yellow and white. This place is pretty much looks like it's just solid weeds right now. No pre-emergent. Hen bits dying. Man, that wild onion is tough to kill. You can see what we're talking about here. Almost all this stuff is starting to turn yellow. Man, this stuff is tough to kill. Look at it. Look at that. What a mess we have over here. So here's one of those wild onion things I was talking about. And you can see how big this one is. But see how some of it's starting to turn yellow here? That's what I want to see. Let me probably have to come back and hit it again. <laughs> Stinks. Smells like chives. So anyways, guys, that's about it. Get your spring checklist together. Go to get a Bermuda grass calendar. Figure out where you are on that zone chart and sort of figure out, okay, I need to adjust my calendar. Um, watch for those weed killing windows. Don't put down weed killer when it's not the right time. Look for those fertilizer windows. Don't put fertilizer down at the wrong times. That's, uh, that's about it. Talk to you later. Doc.